Hello ladies and gentlemen. I wanted to do a short video on explaining what I was talking about in terms of using the Pythagorean theorem and when we solve for the unknown the math actually gives us two values of x, so two answers, one of them being positive and the other one being negative. And when we're dealing with triangles we only worry about the positive answer. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about. So the Pythagorean theorem, if we have a question that looks like this, there's my right triangle. This will be a side. We also call it a leg. This will be a side. We also call it a leg of the right triangle. Let's name the triangle ABC, in which case this side's name would be little c because it's opposite the angle. This side length will be little a because it's opposite the angle a. This side length will be called little b, and it is also the hypotenuse. Which means it's the longest side of the triangle. This side is longer than this side and this side, and it's opposite the largest degree, this one being 90 degrees. These two angles add up to 90, but neither one of them can be 90 degrees or higher. Okay, so if we look at this and think about the Pythagorean theorem, Pythagoras said that the hypotenuse squared will equal the sum of the other two side squares. So c squared plus a squared will equal b squared in this case. Taking a look at that, let's give this some numbers. Why don't we say that this is going to be, c is going to equal 3. I'm making this up. Um, a can equal 4, and we're going to find out what b equals. So in this case, it would be 3 squared plus 4 squared equals b squared. It would be 9 plus 16 equals b squared. 25 equals b squared, which gives us the question b squared equals 25. What this is saying is what, are, what is the number that squared gives us 25? So what is the number of b that if I square it will give us 25? All right, so we square root both sides because square rooting is the opposite of squaring. And if we look at a calculator, my square root button's up there, so I take 25 and I square root it, I just get 5. So my calculator gives me the answer of 5. Now, I'm telling you that in this case, if I'm talking about a triangle, then this must be five units. If this was three centimeters and this is four centimeters, then this must be positive five centimeters. That's the reality of triangles. However, the reality of mathematics, this question is actually a little bit larger than just giving one answer of five. So let's go back and look at that. What number of b, if I square it, will give 25? Well, certainly, we found one of the numbers. It's positive 5. That's what we refer to 5 as, as being positive 5. So positive times positive is positive. 5 times 5 is 25. However, there is another mathematical answer that would work. Negative 5 times negative 5 will also answer this question. If I take negative 5 and square it, I will get negative 5 times negative 5, which is negative times negative, which gives us a positive, 5 times 5, which is 25. So we get the same answer for 25, but with two different b values. In other words, if I put 5 and square it, I get 25. And if I put in negative 5 and square it, I also get 25. That's the math. Now, if I'm dealing with triangles, and this has to be a length, it doesn't make any sense to say that this would be negative 5 units long. There's no such thing as negative units in measurement. However, there is such a thing as an answer of negative 5 in mathematics. So that's why when we do these questions, we're going to be a little bit more mathematically mature when we're answering them than we were in grade 9. And as we move through this course and next course, we're going to need both answers. Right now, we only use one answer, but you need to learn that there's two answers. And later, you're going to have to use both answers. 
So when we go into a question that looks something like this, 3 squared plus 4 squared equals x squared. We're going to do 9 plus 16 equals x squared. We're going to do 25 equals x squared. We're going to do x squared equals 25. All I did was change the order of that. We're going to take the square root of both sides, but we're going to be a little bit more mathematically mature. We're going to say that there is both a positive answer and a negative answer to this. When we take the square root, there's two answers. One of the answers is positive 5, the other answer is negative 5. Since we're using length, mathematically what we say is we want to disregard the negative answer. So we say omit negative 5, or negative answer. You can say omit negative 5, you can say omit negative, any one of those is fine, since x is a length. Now, I can hear the groaning. Oh, do we have to write that all the time? Yeah, you should. If you're planning on getting a high mark in grade 10 applied, if you're looking to get a high mark in grade 11M, then yes, we should be doing this all the time. Will you always lose marks if you don't? No. Are there times when you might? Yes. So take that into account, think about it, and we'll go from there. Thank you for the question, you guys. I got a few people asking about this one in the email. Hope this helps.